You have to take chances in life. If you don't take chances in life, you'll never have the life God has for you. Life is about risk. If you play it safe in life, you ain't gonna have much of a life. If you play it safe, you won't have much of a life. Life is risk. It takes it take courage to pursue your dream. Yeah. I just did it. It cost me everything, but eventually God is very good, man, when he sees you take a leap of faith. Yeah. He supplies you everything you need. Now, it's gonna cost you something, but most people, most, most people are not willing to pay what it costs to go after your dream because you're going to have to hurt a little bit. And most people don't like being uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, please do not pursue success because success is a very uncomfortable feeling. And I just learned to be, I learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you can get that in your head, this too shall pass. Every moment of un everything you've ever gone through, God got you through it. You didn't even realize it. He just got you through it. You can't name one thing he didn't pull you through. Well, I lost my mother. I'm still grieving over that. I lost my mama 21 years ago. I still grieve over it, but I'm here. You know, you, I got through it. You're going to get through it. But you got to take chance in life, man. Can't play it safe, y'all. You got to jump. You got to go for it. If your job makes you sick to go to, if you're unhappy, with waking up to go to where you got to go, it's because you ain't living in your gift. You should, before you die, you should do what God created you to do. You really should, man. Now, that don't necessarily mean you got to quit your job. Some people are born to be teachers, caregivers, nurses, babysitters. Those are gifts, you know what I mean? If you're living in your gift, you're cool. It's just if you ain't. If, like, if you fry chicken better than everybody else, you should be somewhere frying chicken, man. You somebody say, if you do hair better than everybody else, you should be somewhere doing somebody's hair. Yeah. Those are gifts. Telling jokes was a gift. They just not just running, jumping. If you paint, you should be painting. If babysitting is what you really do, you should be babysitting. You doing anything, if you fix cars, you work with your hands, you're supposed to be working with your hands. You do anything else, when that alarm clock go off in the morning, you ain't gonna like it. Now, if you waking up and you going down there, they ain't paying you what you want, you hate your coworkers. You're down there, your boss has no business being your damn boss. See, that's what messed me up. I never had a, a boss that I thought should have been in charge of me. That's what was wrong with my ignorant ass. I just didn't see why this was in charge of me. I didn't get the I really didn't. I just said, this is bull I, This is bull who, who put this stupid son in charge of me? But this dude it has no business being my boss. I just never, I just never thought that anybody should be in charge of me. I always saw myself free. I just want to come to work. This is all I want to do. Before, Bishop Jake said this. He said, before you die, he said, I would hate to die and never do the thing I was born to do. You should look into that before you mess around and check out of here. Let me show you this. We all live inside a bubble, right? This is our world. We go to church here. We work over here. We go get our coffee over here. We go to this park over here. We usually go over here to, you know, hang out with friends. This is our favorite club. This is our world. This is our favorite spot on the beach. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Look, I'd love to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'd love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things. That ain't, that ain't happening. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. Now, like I was telling you before, if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. 
It's some really, really wonderful, ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. You put extra on top of extra, uh, on ordinary, and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. I'm sorry. But here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in L.A. and wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. They already making decisions about your life, and your ass will sleep. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. <laughs> he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. I'm going to ask you one question, I'm going to go. How many of you in here know somebody who loves to sleep? Who knows somebody that loves to sleep? Let me ask you something. Ain't they Poe? I got laid off from Ford Motor Company. I wasn't working. So I didn't have no reason to get up in the morning. Every single morning at 5.30 on the dot, my phone would ring. I pick up the phone, hello. Steve, this is John Walker. How you doing, man? It's gonna be a great day. How you feeling? Yeah, John, I'm asleep, man. Hey, man, it's gonna be a great day. And he'd hang up. <laughs> the next day at 5.30 in the morning, bring, hello. Steve, this is John Walker. How you doing, man? It's going to be a great day. How you doing today? John, I'm asleep, man. Hey, man, I just want to tell you it's going to be a great day. Click. <laughs> Next morning. Bring. Hello? Now, I'm mad now. You know, this <laughs> been going on a couple weeks, and I kind of know who it is. He didn't change a damn thing. Steve, Sean Walker, how you doing, man? It's going to be a great day today. Man, I was so <laughs> mad, man. I hang at phone up. 37 days in a row, he called me the exact same way because he was teaching me something. I didn't know it, and every single day, I picked the phone up. Yeah. Steve, John Walker, man. It's <laughs> man. Yeah, John, yeah, it's going to be a great day. Click. And then one day, the 38th day, he, he told me how many days it was. He kept record. He picked up the phone. He said, I said, hello? He said, hey, Steve, it's John Walker. I said, yeah, man. He said, man, can I ask you something? I said, yeah, John. He said, why do you answer the phone like that in the morning? I said, what are you talking about? He said, every time I call you, I've called you 37 days in a row, and you keep answering the phone like something's wrong. I said, hey, man, I got laid off. I'm getting unemployment. You know, I ain't got to get up early, man. I said, what, what, what's up? He said, I'm really disappointed in you, man. He said, man, when you gonna change your attitude? I said, ain't nothing wrong with my attitude. He said, yeah, it is. He said, Cause when you wake up in the morning, man, you got a bad attitude, which pretty much explains why you've been having a lot of bad days. And he said, man, I hate that about you, man, because you're such a cool dude. You got so much potential. He said, man, I'm sorry to bother you. And he hung the phone up. Man, let me tell you something. That, 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 that cut me so deep, man. Because, you know, I don't like nobody thinking I'm something. But I'm acting like I ain't that, 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 you don't even understand what they did to me. So the next morning, I thought about this all day. I said, man, this dude, he been playing me for 37 days. <laughs> been calling me. Oh, oh, Next morning, I'm damn near sitting up in the bed. When this when this right here. Hello? Hey, Steve, it's John Walker. I said, hey, John, what's happening, man? What's going on with you, baby? I said, it's Steve Harvey, man. He said, Steve, how's it going? I said, man, I'm having a great day, man. I'm having a great day, John, man. You don't believe it, man. I got some great stuff gonna be happening. He said, man, you my man. Click, and he hung up. And I wanted him to ask me what had happened. 
but he never did. Then one day he called me, he said, hey man, you're gonna be sheer greatness because you've learned how to wake up. 